everyone. This is Space Pam, and I am so excited to be with you today. We might learn a little bit about space today. So gather everybody around, and let's get started with a great time together at Sunday School.
can't wait to see what's next I wanna face this world with wonder and excitement Face every challenge every day Hi, it's Space Pam, and I bet we're going to learn a little bit about space today. I love anything that has to do with space. So I'm going to have a couple words I want you to watch for as I tell the Bible story today. First of all, I want you to think about the word light. So look at, I have a star here. We get light from stars. Did you know that our sun is a star, but you never want to really look at it because it could blind you. So be careful. The second word I want you to think about is change. Now I have this beautiful model of a moon. You see the craters on it? Oh, it's so beautiful. You know that when you look up at the moon at night, the light on it makes it change a little bit. Sometimes it's a full moon, sometimes it's a crescent moon, sometimes it's a half moon. So the light on from the sun has the moon change. So the two words I want you to look for today when I tell the story is light. I want you to give me a thumb up when you hear it. And change. I want you to give a thumb up when you hear the word change. So let's start the story. There was this man named Saul, and it was his job to arrest those who were followers of Jesus. And people did not like what they were saying, the followers of Jesus. And there were the high priests, and they were listening to them, and he just felt that it was his job to throw them into jail. So he knew that there were a lot of followers of Jesus in a town called Damascus. So he wanted to get permission to go to Damascus and arrest all these followers of Jesus. So I'm going to start reading the story from Acts 9, and I'm going to start at verse 3. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus who you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. Well, when that light blinded him, he could not see. And so his friends who were with him had to lead him into the city of Damascus. And he was blind for three days. And in Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. And the Lord called to him in a vision, Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man named Saul, for he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. So guess what? Ananias did that. He found where Saul was. He went in there. He placed his hands on his eyes. And he was changed. He could see. Changed. And he used those three days he was blind to really spend time with God. And he found out that he had such a heart for God. He loved God. He wanted to preach about it and tell everybody about it. So once he got his sight back, he went to the synagogue and started preaching, which, you know, that's their church. And he was preaching. But you see, all these people knew that Saul was coming there to arrest the followers of Jesus. And they didn't want to listen to him. Some people did. And so he preached for a little bit. 
but it got to a point where it was being dangerous for Saul to continue preaching. So his friends hid him. And at night, they went to the wall of the city, put him in a basket, and lowered him over the side. And he escaped. Because you see, God was not done with Saul. In fact, as time went on, he became one of the greatest missionaries we have ever had. And God changed his name to Paul. And Paul went on many missionary journeys. And he started all these churches. And people believed and he preached and he had helpers to help him do all this. And then when he would come home, he would write letters. He would write letters to these new churches to teach them, to love them, to tell them how they can best please God and to do the work that God has called them to do as Christians. And guess what? If you go to your Bible, those letters are in the Bible, in the New Testament. You can go to Colossians or Galatians or Philippians or Ephesians. These are the actual letters that Paul, the great missionary, wrote to encourage and teach these new churches how to live a Christian life and be pleasing to God. Now, God had great plans for Saul, who was changed to Paul. Guess what? God has great plans for your life. You are so special to God. He has given you talents and things that you are going to discover what they are so you could be a disciple of Jesus, to share your love, to share your gifts. What could that be? Think about what you might be when you grow up. Maybe a scientist or maybe you love art or music. All those things are gifts that God has given you. So God is not done with you yet. He has great plans for you and you get great joy as you discover what those plans are for your life. So that's the end of our story. Space Pam says, bye, God bless you, and have a wonderful life. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down joy of the Lord, yeah. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Let's sing that again, come on! I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my